This time on Ask Rad Rat, we're talking about big spins, the future of skateboarding video games, and caveman tricks. Let's get started. Welcome to Rad Rat Video. Here on this channel, I talk about all kinds of things from around the skateboarding world, from skateboard video games to trick histories to your questions on Ask Rad Rat. So hit subscribe so you don't miss anything like that coming up. All right, so we got three questions today. Uh, first one I'm, I'm gonna cover pretty quick is from VL Skate, who wanted me to talk about bomb drops versus acid drops versus caveman. So I learned all of these from Tony Hawk's Trick Tips Volume 2 with Mike V in it. Um, and he is the guy to go to for this kind of stuff because this is a, a, um, a lot of stuff that he does. And the way that they're defined in that video, a bomb drop is when you hold your board in your hand, you stand on something, jump off, land on your board. So you can do it off of a ledge into a bank, you can do it, um, one of Mike V's examples in the video is just he jumped off of a car and landed. Um, anything like that, bomb drop, simple enough. But an acid drop, um, there's a little confusion because the Tony Hawk games did them and they did them so weird. In those games, an acid drop is landing in transition when you didn't come from transition. So you can roll off of something and acid drop into a quarter pipe. You could you know, do it by hand, run and jump, land in quarter pipe, acid drop. So there's a little confusion on that, but the original term, um, according to that video, is just riding off of something. So it's dropping off of something without ollieing. Uh, we used to say I, I, I manualed off that, which is kind of a stupid way to put it. You manual for like a quarter of a second so your wheels don't fall off first. Um, so that's all an acid drop is. And then a caveman to me is any trick where it's like a bomb drop, but you're not dropping, you're doing a trick. So if you run toward a, a manual pad, throw the board on your feet, land in a manual, that'd be a caveman manual. You could do a caveman board slide, Mark Gonzalez, caveman dark slide, down a handrail, um, like that kind of stuff uh, would be a caveman. So if you've heard anything else, anything that predates uh, that video or is higher priority than Mike V and Tony Hawk, let me know in the comments. Okay, my second question is from Trillin Ballin Flossen who wanted to know when the term big spin was invented and what's its history. Um, I've answered this in the comments before, but a few more people have asked, so I figured I should just cover it. So um, basically what happened is Brian Lottie invented the trick and he was named by Alfonso Rawls. Now I've read different uh, interviews, one from um, Alfonso, one from Brian Lottie, and one that was from someone else who was friends with them. And the story is always a little bit different, but it's all, in, you know, basically the same. So, um, Brian Lottie was doing big spins first, at least off the tail. Keep in mind, freestyle big spins where you do it off the nose. People had been doing those for a long time. Um, but to actually pop the tail, do a big spin and land it, that's credited to Brian Lottie. And he didn't want it named after himself. Um, and so what Alfonso came up with, or Alf, what he, he came up with was um, um, his name sounded like Lotto. Lottie sounded like Lotto. And there was a lottery draw at the time that was called the Big Spin. And so that's where the name came from. It's kind of a nod to Brian Lottie without having his name in it. Um, and it was called the Big Spin. Now, one of the interviews said that he had to come up with a caption because he was helping someone put it together in a magazine and he came up with it then. Brian Lottie said that he was talking to him about it at a contest he was in and he came up with the name there. So I don't know those exact details, um, but those are the right names anyway. So when did it happen? Um, Brian talks about it being at an NSA AM contest. And uh, it's tough to say exactly when that happened. I know um, NSA was doing a lot of stuff around 86. Uh, so that could have been it. In his first part that I know of in uh, Hocus Pocus, it was in 1989. And he does a couple different big spin things. He doesn't do like a straight big spin and just land it. He does a blunt on a curb big spin out. He does a fakey big spin kickflip. Uh, I think there's another one he does too. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say he had been doing them already. So if I had to throw a ballpark guess out there, I would say 86. But again, the freestyle stuff would have uh, predated that by at least five years, probably more like 10. Okay, last 
question of the day is from Jeremy Baker, who wants to know, would the sales of Steep, or what would the sales of Steep spell for the extreme sports slash recreational sports video game genre as a whole? And what would it take to potentially catalyze the industry to the days of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? So um, I don't think we're ever gonna get back to the Tony Hawk times of popularity, like mainstream popularity in skateboarding. Um, I don't think that's gonna happen. You know, back then, talking like 2001 or so, you had Tony Hawk games, but you had like Pro Surfer, you had Pro BMX, multiple Pro BMX series. You had a couple different skateboarding series as well. You had um, like a scooter series, you had snowboarding stuff. There was like a extreme sports game every month um, around that time. And I don't think it's possible that we'll ever get back to that point. But um, what's it gonna take to bring that back I have talked recently, right here, you can check it out, about my ideal skateboard game that I would design. Um, I get into this a little bit different, different angle, but what I think it would take is a brand new perspective, a brand new idea. So let's say if Skate 4 came out, I think it would do really well, but I don't think it would have huge mainstream AAA popularity that everyone knows about. Um, and I don't think that Tony Hawk will ever make a very successful huge game ever again because um, his name is kind of tainted in the games industry at this point. So many crappy games have came out with his name on it that if Tony Hawk 6 is announced tomorrow and it looks amazing, a lot of people are going to be a little skeptical, right? So I don't know if that's going to be it either. And again, Tony Hawk, um, that formula has been done a million times. Unless it's something totally new, I don't think it's going to set the world on fire. So what I think it has to be for this to happen is an all new game that comes out, completely fresh IP that takes a different angle at skateboarding. So we've done hardcore serious realism in the skate series um, and Thrasher before that. We have um, the Tony Hawk, like, you know, wall ride up to a building and collect stuff in, you know, platforming style games. Uh, we've had different kinds of things. So I wonder if, the only way to really make this work would be something totally new, maybe like an RPG kind of. Like you start, you pick your class, you know, I'm gonna be a tech skater, and then that kind of informs the way that you, your stats build and all that kind of stuff. So like Skyrim with skateboarding, but without the swords and stuff, you know? I'm not, I'm not sure what that would look like, but it's something that hasn't been done yet. So um, that could be something pretty cool. Um, again, I don't know what it'll look like, maybe, like a really story-based, like serious, um, like the story's the main part and the skateboarding is just something that happens. Um, that could be another thing that works really well. Um, Sean White did that, um, but it could have been done a little bit better. So what's gonna get to that point again? I don't, I don't think it's possible, but there are a couple games coming out. There is um, Project Session, which is like an indie version of Skate, like a newer Skate. Um, again, I it looks cool. I mean, I've, I've been following it loosely. I think it looks like it's gonna be really cool, but I don't think it's gonna sell out at GameStop. You know what I mean? Like, even as, as cool as it what might be. The other is a rollerblading game called On A Roll. And that one, I've seen trailers and things. I've talked about it in videos before. It looks really cool, but again, it's it's been done. It's skate, but on blades and made by like three people. So um, to really get excitement into skateboarding again, it would have to be something that has mainstream appeal, something that would be interesting to your friend who's never touched a skateboard before, but also interest us as well. So I'm not sure exactly when something like this is going to happen. Um, it might make the most sense if someone out there had an idea that they were working on to wait a little while and let people's anticipation really build up and then suddenly announce um, a new, completely new idea. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, before I talked about Skate 4, there was like a semi-announcement, not, not really. Um, that didn't pan out. The, they had a, a conference call for investors and they explicitly said they're not working on it. Um, Tony Hawk 6, again, I talked about Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk's working on a project, we don't know what it is, but I still, I don't have very high hopes for it. So. I don't really know what's gonna be on the horizon or when it's gonna come, but I hope we start hearing about new stuff in skateboarding soon. So that's it for this time. Ask all of your questions below, and until next time, here's some more videos you might wanna check out, 
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on stuff like this in the future. Thanks for watching.